So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at a brand new um, game from Compass Games, and it's called Bar Lev, 1973, Arab-Israeli War. And I say a new game, this is a new edition. This is the deluxe third edition of this game. It's been hanging around for quite a long time. It's designed by Chris Fawcett. This is a, this is a pretty big game. Um, it's a two-mapper, um, but you kind of play them they're kind of separate theaters. Uh, so this is the Suez map that they show in the back. I've got it upside down. But there is a, there's a Golan Heights map as well. And you can play them together. You can play them solitaire. You can play it with two or three opponents, depending on how you're doing it. Um, but you can do a one map or in a day. If you're doing a two map, or it can get uh, a little bit longer. And there's different scenarios in there as well in setup. So let's crack it open. If there's one thing I'm a fan of, usually Compass do really nice, colored, vibrant counters. That's one thing I really like from them. Uh, they got D10s, and this game has got a lot of counters. So, rules of play, and then we do have a playbook here, which I presume... Alright, designer's notes, comprehensive examples of air, strikes, air-to-air -air combat. So a lot of this though, I'm expecting to be scenarios and setup. Yeah, okay, great. And this is pretty dense information. We'll read through this. So this is the Suez front. Again, there's a Suez map. And then the Golan front starts down here. This is setup installations that you're gonna put out. Who's on the map, who's off the map, if and when they come in, all that kind of stuff. And then command reserves. All right, so this is this is what you would expect from kind of scenario playbook type thing. But I think these comprehensive examples of how the air wall works will probably be very, very helpful. Usually that kind of stuff's a little bit um, granular, a little bit crunchy, so having examples, good show. Rules of play themselves, extended a sequence of play on the back, but it's really optional. It's about 30 pages of rules or so it looks like. Combat, Jordan River, helicopter transport, movement, indirect fire. Again, this is a very typical modern war game rulebook. Lots of diagrams, lots of pictures. Text's reasonable, so should be able to crunch that one out, get our teeth into it. Okay, there is a lot in here. Woo. All right, so let's start with all the different cards. So this is the Egyptian Armed Forces off-map stacking box. So you can do A, B, C, A through Z, or you can do the kind of, um, yeah, I don't know which alphabet that is, and I'm not going to pretend to know either. Single-sided Syrian Air Force Air Task Display. I presume this is, you put your little fighters in here. Are they doing this? Are they available? Have they flown missions? Were they aborted? Holding boxes, different charts and tables. So this is for Syria. We have an Israeli version. And you'll notice in the Sir in the Syria, they only had the one, because this is going to be played in only one of the maps. The Israelis are fighting on the Golan front and the Suez front, so they've got two charts. And then the Egyptians on the Suez front here, you've got um, this one here for air superiority. So again, Israeli playing on both maps, Syrian and Egyptian on, on a map respectively. Uh, these are identical play aids. So this is a lot of unit notation. At some point you probably won't need these. But you will need the train effects charts. All the different modifiers, all the different terrain types. And these are identical, one for each player. And these are indirect fire tables, direct fire tables, airdrop, air to ground. These are single sided. These are also identical. Alright. Here's what I said about Vibrant Counters. I don't know what it is, I just really like the coloration on them. We've played games like Saipan, The Bloody Rock, uh, they, and they just, I don't know, I think they, they do really bright, bold colors without being clashy. So this is counter sheet number one? Yes, sheet one. As you can see, standard NATO symbols in different formations except for the tanks, which have um, tank symbols on them. I, I 
don't know for sure. These might be the, those installations they were talking about. And the reverse side. Where the numbers are much reduced. And these are the, this is the weaker side. I like that they made those all about a, a different shade. There's really no missing that on the map. These are more Israelis. Oh, a ton more formations, some game turn markers. And some dismounted markers. And then all the different aircraft here, which looks like we've got a lot of F4s. Phantoms, A4s, and a couple of other different marks. Got some Mirage, and a whole bunch of different ones down here as well. So that's your Israeli counter sheets. I don't know uh, which one's which, that's a good question. Okay, I think this is the Syrian. Oh no, this is Egyptian General Reserves. So these guys are Egyptians. Where are the Syrians? Ah, okay. No, that's Aaron. Syrians are green, presumably. Okay, we'll get there. All right. Again, here's all your um, Egyptian MiGs, SU-7s, tiny nice counters. Everything's very visible. That's what I like to see on a counter. Is it easy to see? Is it pleasant on the eye? And your reduced sights as well. This is Egyptian second army. Are these kind of dark olive? This is Egyptian general reserves. These are kind of brown ones. That's a lot of guys. And then this is the Egyptian third army. And then down here, this is Arab minor allies. So I'm pr this is probably just a conglomeration of all the minor nations in the area that contributed forces, but not an absolute ton of guys. Green counter sheets. Let's see. Did they say who these were? One would presume that these are the Syrians. Yes, they are. Okay. So it's the Syrian Arab army. These are all in green. You can see you got your little tanks here as well. whole bunch of guys on there, and their reduced sides a nice light green. Oof. High, low, pretty much cloud markers for air cover, supply markers, Syrian Air Force. And who are these light greens? Oh, this is the Iraqi army. And their reduced sides respectively. And then a sheet of fired markers. Supply markers, FF taken. So I think with how many Egyptians there are, you put them in those kind of off map stacking boxes so that you don't get ridiculous stacks. And these are the corresponding uh, markers that have moved on the board, presumably, so you don't get huge stacks that I'm going to knock over every time, which I appreciate. A whole bunch of markers there. So, last thing in the box. We've got two maps, as we discussed earlier. So the first one, let's look at the Golan map, I believe it's this one. Alright, uh, let's see which... And it's kind of oriented this way, at least this is the way the words are written on the map themselves. So you've got Lebanon up top and Jordan down bottom, not playable. And it looks like you've got your... well... How are they divvying this up? The kind of mark, the demarcation down there. But yeah, this is Golan Heights map. And we have, all right, different, different group holding boxes down here. And you've got central front mobilization boxes, moving guys around to actually get them onto the board and get them going as the war goes on. Uh, down here, we have a turn track marker, and there's also an Israeli turn record chart on this side. And down here, we have Syrian operation points and morale track. And again, conversely, you've got the Israeli one on this side. So you can play just go on heights, you can play just the Suez front. 
or you can stick them both together and play them concurrently. Um, and there's rules for keeping everything together and who can be where and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what is that? The, well, we'll just show you this side. So you got Egyptian stuff on this side, and it's again, it's the same boxes, holding boxes over here, and then turn track and a little morale track there. Obviously, you'd be looking at it from this direction if you were looking at a map. And then, uh, again, these holding boxes, and there's a little, little smaller mobilization front, and you can move guys uh, from the central front and all that kind of stuff. So, the map themselves, not huge, right? A lot of the map is holding boxes. This is where you're playing, so I'm expecting the fighting to be uh, um, pretty violent. Like it's going to be like a storm and a teacup almost. And by that I don't mean it's a storm and teacup, I mean it's going to be very concentrated and, uh, you know, a very violent engagement where there's a lot of action going on, I hope. Uh, but this is a, a big game, that's not a, that's not a small amount of counters going on. But I think if you play just one of the maps, probably very manageable in the day. Um, if you're going to play them all together, you're going to have a pretty significant... Um, a significant game and probably a decent time length but the reality is those it's not huge five mappers that's two smaller maps again with all the holding boxes and it says here it says 12 plus hours for a two map game but it's not going to be like a 300 hour game it's not it's not a GTS it's not a huge OCS game you know if you want to play them both, you know, you know, it might take one weekend, but it's not going to take a month's worth of weekends. So we'll get this one to the table and at least start getting pushed, counters pushed around and play around and learn this one. Uh, but this is Barlev, the deluxe third edition from Compass Games. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. Thanks for watching.